No way. Shut up. $1,000 set of wheels and tires. Versus $3,600 set of wheels and tires. Does more expensive really mean more better? Let's find out. Go. Yeah. We bought two identical Nissan 350Zs. Almost identical, as identical as we could find. We've been modifying them to be fun, daily drivers that you can take to the track. One Z gets expensive parts, and the other Z gets cheap parts. Then we're gonna test them to see which components are actually worth spending your hard-earned money on. For my wheels, I went with a set of Advan RG3s. They're very strong, they're very lightweight. They're $667 a wheel, which is nothing to sneeze at. And for tires, I went with these bridge Stone Potenza RE71Rs. They are $265 a tire. I got them on sale. And on the cheaper side, I went with XXR527 wheels. They're 127 bucks each. And for tires, I went with Federal 595 RSRRs. They're only 136 bucks a tire. What do you say we open up our wheels and see what they look like? Those are sick, dude. And we went with an 18 by 10 square setup on my Z. This is light, dude. <laughs> Let's see what mine look like. Ooh! I will be honest. I like the way mine look more than yours. You like them more? Yeah, I like the more spooky look. So why do mine cost six times as much as Nolan's? Well, alloy wheels can be made using different methods that determine their weight and strength. My ad bands are flow formed. The process gives the wheels more strength without adding more material, so they come out stronger and lighter. Each of them weighs in at about 20 pounds. So mine are low pressure cast wheels and they weigh about 24 pounds each. So Nolan's suspension is gonna have to work a little bit harder to control its heavier wheel than mine will. My wheel has what's called a multi-lug pattern, so this wheel can fit on many different cars. Not as cool as the single lug pattern. No, it's sort of a telling yeah. that your wheels are cheap. Yeah, no, I'm gonna try to keep these as nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to keep these. I'm sorry. I'm gonna try to keep these as nice as possible. So this is the first test you gotta do with the tire. Okay. See how good they bounce. Oh yeah. Rubber compounds are serious business. Unlike rubber chickens, which are technically a joke business. Tire companies are super protective of what's in their secret sauce. Plus, the government's tire quality grading standards aren't strictly enforced. And the way manufacturers rate them all is kind of unverifiable too. It's just weird. <laughs> yeah, so while the Federal 595 RSRR tires going on Nolan's car have a 200 treadwear rating, that doesn't mean that they'll perform the same as my 200 treadwear Potenza RE71Rs. It's time to stop being polite and start getting real. Can cheap tires match the performance of expensive tires? I hope so. I hope so, I hope so too. I would much rather yeah. spend $500 than $1,200. Ridiculous. All right, you can spend all the money in the world on wheels and tires, but if they don't fit right, then they're gonna be a really expensive paperweight that sits in your room forever. Ask me how I know. Unlike most projects, the hard work for fitting wheels and tires on your car comes before you even open your toolbox. Research is the name of the game here, boys and girls. There are a lot of numbers on a tire, but there are only three that you need to know to make sure they fit on your car. The width, the profile or the aspect ratio, and the diameter. The width is self-explanatory. It's the width of the tire. So these are 265s. Generally, the wider a tire is, the more grip it will have, but the more rolling resistance it will have too. So it's it might eat up some gas mileage. The second number is a measurement of the sidewall, but it's not in millimeters. It's what's called an aspect ratio. 45 means that the sidewall is 45% of the measurement of the width. So the width is 245 millimeters. This 45 means that the sidewall is 45% of 245. The smaller your tire aspect ratio, the less tendency of the tire to shift back and forth on the wheel, the less rollover it has, but 
it'll be a lot harsher of a ride. You know, you're pretty much riding on rubber bands. And then the last number, the 18, that's just the diameter of the hole in the tire, so you know what size wheel to stuff in it. And those are the things that are important to know whether or not you can fit them under your car. So that's tires. That's pretty easy. With wheels, there's a lot of things to consider and a lot of scary numbers involved, but don't sweat it. Zach and Nolan are gonna break it down. I attempted to break it down. Or you move the center of the, the more you move the hub. There's really five numbers you need to know with wheels. You need to know your diameter, so you need to know if it you know, matches the tire you're putting it into. The next measurement is the width and wider wheels lets you run wider tires, but you can also run skinnier tires and if we really wanted to go full stance boy, we could put super skinny tires on our wide wheels and uh, kill ourselves when we're driving over twisty roads. You need to know your bolt pattern and you need to know your hub center bore to know whether or not it'll slip over the hub on your car. So that's all important, but that's all pretty simple. The last measurement on the wheel is the offset. And this is scary, but it's not, it's not. To understand offset, let's first find zero offset. Zero offset is the dead center line of the wheel. And then when we talk about positive offset, that means that we're moving the mounting face of the wheel, this thing, we're moving that positively outwards, okay? So towards the face of the wheel is positive. That's it. And then that lets you know how far out your wheel's gonna poke or how far in it's gonna be sucked and ultimately how it's gonna look. Because an 18 by 10 could fit a million different ways given a million different offsets. But with the internet, with our forums, we know what people run, we know what looks good, and so we've got some targets to hit. You definitely wanna look up the torque specs for your lug nuts. You don't wanna be driving down the street and have your wheels come off. I've been in a car where it happened, not mine, and it was one, terrifying, and two, very embarrassing. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yes! We don't have to roll the fenders. We have to roll the fenders because our wheels are very wide and the offset is relatively aggressive, so I'm taking the fender liners in. If you did your math a little bit wrong or if you're just going full send on your fitment, you can buy yourself a few extra millimeters of wiggle room by rolling your fenders. This usually consists of bending the inner lip of your fender upward without really changing the exterior look or shape of the panel. You can do it with a purpose-built fender roller like this, or you can go old school with some hammers. But he doesn't yeah. like this anymore. This is some real artisan, artisan stuff. I just broke something. <laughs> and it always helps to add some heat to try and keep the paint from cracking. I think we got plenty of room. I think uh, the fender pulling and rolling did the trick. Uh, I don't think we're gonna rub it all. So Nolan's car is slammed. <laughs> Cloud God! And I am honestly a little jealous that his car is so slammed. You gotta get lower, dude. You really I really love it, dude. Let's go see if this puppy rubs any. More, more, more. Ooh. You think he's gonna rub? Mm, no. Hooks up. Hooks up. For show. Sure. Road noise Ooh. with new tires. Got a little bit of rubbing. Yeah, there's a definite drone to tire noise. These feel good. I, uh,. Like around that kind of corner earlier, you could kind of feel it push a little in the front. It's like on rails, man. God, James's car is gonna feel amazing. Damn, we don't even trip in second anymore. No, we're just stuck to the road. You have so much confidence in these tires. Like all the confidence we took away with the $300 coilovers, you get back with these tires. But their tires at a fraction of the price yeah. are Definitely 80% is good, if not yeah. more. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Dude, it's great. No rubbing, nothing. We might have just ride height a little bit, but that's just because we want to look dover. It feels very planted, very like confidence inducing, which might be a bad thing for guys like me and Zach. I'm really happy with it. It feels really, really, really good. What a combination of smells. I guess what we learned today is that hot boy isn't a choice, it's a lifestyle. <laughs> and that, that's a good it. bang for your buck, man. Like yeah. I would be happy with that for yeah. under 1300 bucks. That's yeah. legit. Uh, Zach, are you ready? I am ready. All right. Last episode, we set up a slalom course to test the handling of our new coilovers with stock tires. This time, we ran the same course to see how much of a difference our new thick grippy boys made. 
So I think for us to really see the limit of these tires, we'd need to be on a track and like really running hot laps, heat cycling the tires. I think the Federals and the Bridgestones are gonna feel very similar for what we're doing. When you look at both runs side by side, you can clearly see that low cars, Federal RSRRs, maintain traction noticeably better than the stock tires. In high car, the results were even more apparent, especially around the last cone. You can see here the rear end of high car kick out with the stock tires, but with the Bridgestone RE71Rs, that booty stayed solidly planted. Next up, we ran what's called a lateral G test. Basically, you drive around in a big circle as fast as you can until the tires lose grip. If you've ever been on a merry-go-round, this is kind of like that, but way more fun. And if you think about it, there's way more horses in this one. I'm talking hers purrs. Did you break it loose? I didn't see. In this episode, we're testing the tires, but both cars have different suspension setups that affect how they drive. The low car was jouncing, bouncing all over the place, looked super unplanted, looked uncomfortable. The front end was just like <laughs> And the high car, I could have done that all day. It was very comfortable. It was eating up every imperfection as we were going around, and it felt very neutral. Uh, we eventually just kind of pushed it out, but it was, it was hardly even oversteer. And I'm super happy with the way this thing feels. And finally, we conducted a 60 to zero deceleration test. You might think that this would be testing the brakes, but the traction of the tires actually plays the biggest role in your stopping distance. Turns out 60 to zero deceleration tests are really hard. I got like 55. Did you find it harder to do than you thought it would be? Yeah, yeah. Because I would get up to like 65 and be like, okay, I can let off and it'll slow down. And then you let off and it's like, still 65. And I was like. But we think that we were able to get enough good runs out of each car to draw some pretty decent conclusions. So does more expensive mean, mean more, more better? better? The results are in. And they may shock you. They probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this episode of High Low. Are you like me? Smart, handsome, too strong for your own good, but absolutely terrified of losing your hair? You stay up at night just running your fingers through it thinking, am I going bald? Because once you are, it's too freaking late. Then all of a sudden, you're a 24 year old programmer that looks like his own dad. And nobody likes that. That's gross. Luckily, there's Keeps. Keeps is up to 90% effective at stopping further hair loss. And you don't even have to go to the freaking doctor to get it. So if you're ready to get serious about keeping your hair, go to keeps.com slash high low and save 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash H-I-L-O-W. Save 50% off your first order and not lose your freaking hair. Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this episode of High Low. For the slalom test, the tires made a huge difference, Nolan, okay. for both cars compared to stock. Low car ran a 6.57, and high car ran a 6.52, which is 7.6% improvement over stock. A half second difference over a 400 foot course is- Huge. That's Really big, yeah. Massive. And I also want to point out that high car is now officially faster than low car. We're at one and one now, we're tied. <laughs> so for the radial test, both cars were consistently breaking loose at around 40 miles an hour. Low car got up to around 39 miles per hour before they broke loose. High car was around 41. Two miles an hour. Not, not huge, bad. but also. Not uh, nothing. Uh, yeah, not nothing. Low car suspension probably made it more difficult yeah. to hold on to that. You guys were bouncing. Oh yeah. Like my wife's <laughs> <laughs> Finally, the 60 to zero deceleration test. Regardless of all of our driver error and difficulty, we were able to get a pretty consistent data set. But when this car was new, it stopped at 120 feet. High car was a little bit better than low car, but both cars are considerably better than stock. There's just so much more contact patch. I would think maybe the compound has a little bit more to do with that than the width. As far as wheels go, I don't think Nolan or I are good enough drivers to notice the difference in wheel performance. No. Uh, basically, buy something nice enough that's not gonna break, totally. stay safe, uh, and then it just comes down to how hard you wanna flex. In my case, with the Advans, 
I have so much clout. A lot of clout. It's coming out of my nose. Oh. Personally, I like my wheels better. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna say the Advans look bad because they don't. They look amazing. But I like the XSRs better. I think they're great value for the money. I wouldn't buy the XXRs. I would buy something slightly cheaper than the Advan. <laughs> you have to pick one of the two. One of the if I had to pick one of the two, I would get the Advans because I have a reputation to uphold and I can't be rolling around on multi-lug pattern wheels. So, Nolan, mm. does more expensive mean more better? Technically, sort of. yes. Definitely. Sort of, yes. Definitely, 100%. In every test, they perform better. I know, but it's not. Your tire. It, it wasn't like the suspension test where it was like immediately apparent. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, ask uh, me which ones I would buy. Which tires would you buy, James? I would buy the Federals. Okay. I want a car that I can break the rear end loose if, when I want to. Yeah, that makes you know? sense. I, I, I'm with you on the Federals just because, not for the reason that you want a looser car, but because like you have to be such a better driver to feel any difference. Also, I just want to address some comments in the last video saying that we're sponsored by KW or that we're going to be sponsored by the best parts in every episode. Not true. We bought All every part that you see in this entire series, we paid for. Thank you for watching High Low. Next week, I'm gonna throw a huge brake kit onto High Car and Nolan. Yeah, we're gonna put some upgraded brake pads, upgraded rotors, and some steel braided brake lines on the low car and see how those upgrades perform. I love you. Be safe. What? That's not my catchphrase. Be nice. I love you. See you next time. How are we gonna put on a shirt? You can't even remember. I don't know. <laughs>